Luxury fashion is a nearly $400 billion industry, but you won't believe who's actually keeping those Louis Vuitton bags and Gucci belts flying off the shelves. No, it's not the ultra-rich 1%. I'll reveal the surprising middle-class demographic that's been propping up the luxury empires this whole time. But that's all changing with the recession looming. Those aspirational shoppers are cutting back and high-end brands are starting to crumble as a result. So is this the end for conspicuous logos and monograms? Will we see the rise of stealth wealth style instead? And what do bored billionaires do when minimalism goes mainstream? Hit the subscribe button and let's start the video. What even makes a product or brand considered luxury in the first place? Essentially, most experts agree on three core criteria that position a label in the luxury bracket. One, it must have premium pricing that clearly creates a high cost barrier to entry. Two, the quality and craftsmanship better be exceptional. We expect incredible attention to detail that justifies the inflated price tags. And three, owning or wearing said luxury item should convey an elevated social status or distinction. Basically, you want the brand to scream, I'm better than you because I can afford this. When you consider most luxury brands, they possess these three traits even if product categories differ wildly. You might have a $10,000 alligator skin Birkin, but also a $400 Gucci beauty palette. And while one is a handbag and one is makeup, both offer premium pricing, top tier quality, and most importantly, the kind of logo stamped social clout people yearn for. And if you're still thinking, luxury schmuxury, I don't care about any of this nonsense. Well, tough luck because it's a nearly $400 billion industry. And that money comes from somewhere. Where exactly? Well, brace yourself for an onslaught of luxury brand categories because this is where things get complicated. Essentially, the industry breaks down into varying leagues. If you consider luxury conglomerates as holding companies that own a portfolio of brands, just like regular corporations hold different business divisions. Sitting at the very top is what I call the major league. This is the likes of LVMH and Kering that contain the heavy hitting brands we mentioned earlier. We're talking over $10 billion in sales annually. Louis Vuitton just reached a record $20 billion in revenue if that provides some context around the scale of spending happening here. These guys are the BBAs, the big baller brands that often lead mainstream fashion trends both on the runway and on the streets. Their power and influence seeps into culture, so it's no surprise they top the luxury chain. But then we have a group I refer to as the minor league, which catches the majority of brands that fall into the broader luxury industry bucket. This tier further splits into two camps. You've got section one, the names that are still relatively well known to the general public, but aren't quite as ubiquitous as Louis Vuitton. Labels like Celine, Saint Laurent, and Armani generate robust sales between two to five billion annually. They feature prominently in pop culture and advertising, but have slightly more mass market versus high fashion prestige. And then section two houses the niche luxury brands, not instantly recognized by the average person, but still beloved by industry insiders and shoppers in the know. These quieter labels make under $2 billion per year, but offer seriously top-tier craftsmanship and often centuries-long heritage. They mostly fly under the radar unless you read Vogue or have shopped the luxury floor of, say, Bergdorf Goodman. Some examples here include Loro Piana, Brunello Cuginelli, and more artistic offshoots like Bottega Veneta. So now that we've categorized the key luxury industry players, we can analyze spending patterns by class. You'd think the 1% from stars like Kim Kardashian to executives like Elon Musk would constantly rock the major names with the highest brand awareness. But interestingly enough, most old money individuals with generational wealth focus their spending on minor league labels instead on top tier but more obscure heritage brands that embody bespoke quality and most importantly, discretion and subtlety over logos. They want luxury signaling to come from the impeccable construction and materials instead of monograms. This approach falls into an aesthetic dubbed quiet luxury, and frankly, it's the antithesis of what most people picture when they think of luxury style. Celebs dripping in head-to-toe logos versus more ambiguous, totally unbranded designs. See, new money individuals tend to physically display affluence through loud prints, visible branding, and obvious opulence. Think rappers in head-to-toe Gucci monograms and rollback prices modern-day influencers posing with piles of shopping bags. The anonymity of their wealth prior to fame results in an overemphasis on blatant labels to signal their social standing now. 
In contrast, old money values taste, exclusivity, and a less is more subtlety that shows confidence. They buy from brands that require extensive fashion knowledge to even recognize, let alone purchase from, because that insider status speaks for itself. It's all about elevated basics and quality materials that don't scream for attention. The obsession with inconspicuous consumption also shows how luxury and status extends beyond literal price points. Specific hard-to-attain designs from under-the-radar labels carry social clout you can't buy with new money that posts it all on Instagram. So with these class dynamics squared away, where exactly were different groups spending money the past few years? Well, during the peak pandemic era, those aspirational middle-class buyers said YOLO and blew cash on consolation gifts from their favorite accessible luxury brands. Think entry-level Louis Vuitton bags, Gucci belts, and other icons at more reasonable luxury price points. Ironically, this was all happening while the truly wealthy 1% were also buying luxury goods. But as mentioned earlier, from Nietzsche high society name drops like Loro Piana and Brunello Cusinelli. This group never broke out of their quiet luxury shell while the temporarily emboldened middle class abandoned practicality in hopes of feeling alive through designer splurges. Retail therapy kicked into high gear for 2020 and 2021, but the trouble bubble burst soon after lockdowns lifted and reality set back in. Middle class folks not named Kylie Jenner realized they better watch their wallets. And so mainstream luxury's luck ran out when pre-pandemic shopping habits made a comeback. Out with senseless splurges and in with savings accounts once more. Turns out buy now pay later fun hits different when inflation soars to a 40 year high. There you have it folks, my deep dive into the fascinating hierarchy and looming identity crisis in the nearly half a trillion dollar luxury fashion world, from the major players to the minor leagues to the seismic shifts happening behind the scenes. Where do you think things go from here? Will we see the fall of flashy logos, the rise of stealth wealth style, or luxury fashion swinging back in some wildly new artistic direction? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, smash that like button and subscribe to the Infinite Lux and hit that bell icon. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.